Buenos Dias from just outside Barcelona. We have gotten up, got a little extra sleep this morning, and we are down here in the hotel lobby area for our breakfast. So I'll show you guys what we've got going on this morning for breakfast before we start our day. So we got some pineapple juice, some piña juice, and a fruit salad yogurt, which looks like it's got banana, pineapple, and kiwi. And of course, some cheese and assorted meats, um, a muffin, a couple donuts, and a couple pastries to start my day today. And it's just beautiful sitting down here in the lobby. You got the sun beating in. Feels like it's gonna be a good day. Here's the Arc de Triomphe here in Barcelona, modeled after the very famous one, of course, in Paris. Got some palm trees here for you. Again, another Florida comparison. A lot of Florida comparisons here in Barcelona. That's called Okay, so those red bricks. They always tell us that it was New Modeja, that building as well. It's called the building of the three dragons. We're going to pass by. It was one of the pavilions that was built for the Portuguese Universal. And now is the Natural Science Museum. That normally it's closed and I don't know why, but it's over there. Anyway, it's really cool. And this, I love, love, love this park. It's so big. Think about something. With, during the Industrial Revolution, lots of people from the countryside came here and they were used to nature. They, they came here to work in factories and used to live <coughs> in little apartments, like three or four different families, without any space to really breathe the whole day in the factories. So they were having lots of, lots of lung problems, lots of respir respiratory problems. So they decided, the city hall decided to open the very first public uh, park in the city. And that is this park, for people to walk around, to breathe fresh air, surrounded by nature again. So inside you have loads of beautiful buildings. One of them is a Parliament of Catalonia and in the left side, in the left side, in the middle of the park, you have a beautiful, a beautiful uh, fountain that was designed by Gaudí, all like golden fountain. It's one of the most beautiful spots in that, in that, um, that park as well. At the end of the park is a suit of Barcelona. I really like the architecture these structures they built to hold the lights in this area. It's really neat. Right here by another statue. Sorry, I know I'm moving the phone pretty fast there. Jess is gonna yell at me for that, but. We're walking into the pretty park. Let's see what we've got going on here. A lot of bikes. A lot of bikes, a lot of Segways, a lot of electric scooters. Okay, so this is a pretty interesting fountain, if you ask me. Got all the little baby cherubs kind of climbing, and you got an evil looking gargoyle thing, and then this one's being held up by its ankle, like dunked in. All right, I wish there was a sign that would tell me more about this, because that's very interesting. Walking down this beautiful gothic alley, we're headed to the Picasso Museum. So hopefully show you guys around, give you all some video of some Picasso paintings here in Barcelona. It's not too crowded, probably because it's still fairly early in the day. <laughs> all right, so small change in plans. We, we took, uh, we bought tickets to the Picasso Museum, but we've got to come back in about an hour. So instead, we're going to go into the Basilica here in Santa Maria del Mar. Kind of surprising, and I said it this morning, that um, this is the first Basilica slash chapel slash cathedral that we've been in thus far which is just really really surprising because normally we're hitting these everywhere we can go but 
we didn't go to a single one in Madrid. So we wanted to make a point of it. To come into this one here. Because you can see it's still very much kept in the Gothic style of the old Renaissance Middle Age period. You've got the stained glass windows all throughout. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with the purpose, the original purpose of stained glass and why they put them throughout during the Middle Ages, just a brief little history lesson for you. You know, the Middle Ages is also often referred to as the Dark Ages. And the reason for the Dark Ages nickname is because there's not a lot of written collections from the period because a vast majority of the population of Europe was illiterate during the time. So they couldn't read, they couldn't write. So when you came to the church, the only people that could really read the Bible were the priests. So as a result, you have these stained glass windows that would tell the stories from the Bible and the preacher could direct the attention of the congregation to a window while he was preaching to kind of help them follow along with the message. And so that was the original purpose, almost serving like picture books. And of course today we can recognize them for the beauty that they are. This is a fairly big basilica compared to what it looked like on the outside. I was not expecting it to be as large as it is. I should have known better the amount of these that I've been into. Look at that huge door. You can hear the motorcycle going by outside. close to the uh, Basilica we're going into what looks like a marketplace it used to be a marketplace but is now the center of culture yeah, and memory your heart, not your, not your head. so it's a lot of ruins in here of the past of Barcelona that we'll see Standing over there, and oh, yeah, I saw the building. Yeah, when they were like, yeah, saying, he was like, How do you like our area or whatever? So, these are the ruins of old Barcelona. It gives me a very terracotta soldier type vibe. But if this looks familiar, for those of you that have seen the movie 
Uncharted with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg, there were there was a fairly long scene that was filmed in this building. So that's why it might look familiar to you. Very, very neat, because that is a movie I have seen fairly recently, within the last month or so. And so immediately something that I recognize. <laughs> Some more of the ruins. Just really, really cool. And come over here to one of the information stands they have here. I'll zoom this out a little so that hopefully y'all can see. So the wreck com tall find the English translation here. The Retcom Tall, the open air channel that brought water from the River Besos into the city, was perfectly integrated into the urban fabric. It was flanked by a street and crossed by several bridges. It was probably constructed in the 10th century, so the 1900s, and remained in use until the 1970s. It powered up to 13 mills, both inside and outside the city and provided water for irrigating crops and for washing places. This water course came to define the industrial character of the urban area, lying between the Recomtal and La Fusina. Because it became the home to numerous trades that needed water, like tanners, couriers, glovers, or dyers, La Fusina was the name given to the easternmost area of the city. But apart from its irrigating and industrial function, the Retcom Tall also served a less noble purpose, but just as important for the orderly running of the city, that of collecting wastewater. The result was often unpleasant because the closing of a sluice gate to operate a mill or a storm coming off the sea could push that wastewater upstream and back into the sewers. Another interesting fact for you here so after a decade of warfare and a terrible siege that lasted over a year, the people of Barcelona and the Catalan institutions were still refusing to surrender. By that point, the support that arrived by sea from the territories of the empire was very limited. Few more than 5,000 defenders of the city among troops and volunteers and militia were defending it against 40,000 soldiers of the Bourbon army early morning of September 11th saw the start of the definitive attack through the seven breaches opened in the city walls. The fighting raged for hours and thousands were killed. Directed by General Villaro Villaroel, the Catalan cavalry launched its last counterattack along Carrere del Bornet to the Pla de Lille area. Rafael Casanova the Conseiller in Cap, where the head counselor led the resistance by the bastion of Saint Pierre, where he was wounded. At two o'clock in the afternoon, Villarreal capitulated, putting an end to the siege. The war of Spanish succession in the Principality of Catalonia would finish with the surrender of the town of Cardona and the freedom of Catalonia and its rights and constitutions would be abolished. So a whole different meaning for September 11th here in Catalan. We walk back to the park that we were in a little earlier where I showed you guys the fountain with the weird little chair babies. Just what a view this is. And then how about that tree? All the funky bends in the tree. It looks like a corkscrew, like a crazy straw. Got a neat piece of modern art here in the park. You can see and hear the dogs playing around in the water. Not supposed to be in there, but they are they are cute and they are splashing and having themselves a good time. They're really, really awesome. We saw it from all the way over there by the fountain. I'll come over and check out what this was. This is a beautiful park. And it is just big it's huge 
just, just, you don't see public parks, I don't think, that are this massive in the state. Kind of like a children's play area up here. You got some picnic tables. Statues, what I came up here to see. Does anybody uh, knew or recognize Arabelle? Can't say I know the history of this fella. I'll look it up later. Because if you're important enough to have a monument in a big open public park like this, you obviously did something of importance. really nice all right we are back at the Picasso Museum so we spent that little time showing y'all the Basilica and the ruins and then our time came for us to be able to come back and experience the Picasso Museum been taking pictures of many of the paintings but I just had to get them on video to show you guys too because they are just magnificent works most of them coming from the end of the 19th century 1897 1898 just incredible and just a beautiful room too to showcase them in early 1899, Picasso returned to Barcelona and from then on became a full member of the Catalan Avant-Garde, a meeting point in part of the Catalan artistic and literary world was the famous Café Cortegra, which opened in 1897. The influence of Catalan modernism is evident in his work. Picasso's output from 99 to 1900 is dominated by the human figure especially the portraits of his friends, which were put on show in the exhibition room at Quataga in February 1900, his first individual exhibition. Nevertheless, he continued to paint the street scenes and cityscapes he liked so much and introduced a subject he would return to at other stages of his life, the landscape scene from the window. This is Barcelona rooftops. 
some pottery. Isn't that Picasso made? Guys, this room. I mean, breathtaking. The room itself to display the artwork. My gosh. Las Meninas. Between August and December of 57, Picasso carried out an exhaustive analysis of Velazquez's Las Meninas. The suite of 58 works which Picasso donated to this museum comprises 45 interpretations inspired by Velazquez's painting. Nine that describe the dovecote he had installed in his studio, three landscapes, and a portrait of Jacqueline. Let's begin with the artist's own words noted by Sabarte in his book La Tierra de Picasso to lay the foundations for an analysis of the series. Suppose one were to make a copy of Las Meninas in good faith. If it were me, the moment would come when I would say to myself, suppose I move this figure a little to the right or a little to the left. If the case arose, I would do it my own way, forgetting Velasquez. I would almost certainly be tempted to modify the light or arrange it differently in view of the chain's position of figures. Gradually, I would create a painting of Las Meninas sure to horrify a specialist in the copying of old masters. It would not be the one he thought he saw in Velasquez's canvas. It would be my Las Meninas. So after reading that, here is Picasso's Las Meninas. After a brisk one kilometer walk, we made our way back to uh, the La Bocaria market that Doug and I walked to yesterday that wasn't open. It is open and thriving today. This place is a lot bigger than the Market de San Miguel that we were at in Madrid. So we stopped here for a little lunch. Doug got a couple of spicy burritos. I got a spicy burrito uh, beef and a spicy chicken empanada. And then we both got these little smoothie drinks. Mine is mango and coconut and doug got one that is uh coconut and blackberry our, while walking to our next destination lunch was fantastic that that spicy beef burrito was really really good it was very spicy they stuffed it full and it was only about the size of half a burrito was still extremely filling like i also got that chicken empanada and only had a couple bites because I was so full from the burrito and and the smoothie was great there wasn't a lot to it as far as uh, you know it wasn't a big one but but yeah fantastic lunch had the market been open yesterday and we got that yesterday I definitely would have gone back to get it again today and I probably would have gotten you know the same burrito so just just great so next we're walking over to the Obi-Wan experience that we saw yesterday that hopefully you guys have seen by now in yesterday's video. Um, of course, it was closed yesterday. Let's hope it's open today so we can see what they've got. All right, the Movie Star Center is open. So we'll go in and we'll see what all there is to the Obi-Wan experience. Guys, you really have no clue how cool this is just to walk off the street in Madrid to see this stuff. You saw the Django Fett and the Boba Fett downstairs that I was able to show you from the window last night. You've got all these old fashioned toys, old school Obi-Wan, Luke. <laughs> One of the musicians and Greedo. And we all know Han shot first. There's R2-D2. And 3PO.
And here we have Han Solo trapped in carbonite. Probably on his way to Boba Fett. You have the Rancor. Slave Leia. Oh, got Jabba's little pet. Of course, Jabba himself. One of the Morian soldiers. They got the big video display here showing clips from Obi-Wan. Uh, this is just fascinating. Like, you want to trap Americans, this is how you trap Americans. This is just awesome. I don't know how well y'all be able to see that on film there. That is awesome. Little augmented reality there. Oh, Darth Maul. Rumors say old Darth Maul may be making a comeback. We'll see. Count Dooku. Old General Grievous. Massage. Oh, you've got Clone Wars. Master Yoda. Palpatine. I thought I heard lightsaber doing. <laughs> Uh oh, that's awesome. Now we know how y'all can spend an afternoon. That's too great. Lightsabers for the kids. The, the kids are battling with lightsabers. Another Yoda. Let's see what's around this corner. Oh, Darth. Darth and Obi-Wan from A New Hope. Birth of Darth on the screen there. From Revenge of the Sith. Of course, there's Hayden Christensen as Anakin. Doing a fascinating job. All the Darth. All the Darth. Oh, this is fascinating. And Darth without his helmet from the end of Return of the Jedi. And you got the blue and red lightsabers hanging from the ceiling in here. Some more versions of Obi-Wan, because of course this is the Obi-Wan experience. And we'll probably Go back over here to this main area and you saw the photo op over here with the uh, with the Obi-Wan poster out here. Hollywood style photo op experience. Definitely be getting my photo made here. I'm sure I'll throw on a lightsaber. And there's the man himself, Ewan McGregor. I'd just like to say this was fantastic, getting to come here, getting to see this, getting to do this. And this is all for our good buddy, Dean, because Dean is probably the biggest Star Wars fan that we know. We love you, Dean. We love you, Dean. Dean, it's, you're the best. Wait, what okay, color would all of um, like Blue. That's probably why all of them are blue. I want to get the grill up. Duel, have a lightsaber duel. <laughs> we didn't realize it before, but we got we could, could take pictures with the Jedi robes on. So Doug and I got our picture made with the robes. The kids are getting the robes on now for their pictures. So we'll I'll post that on my Facebook for those of y'all to see the pictures of Doug and I 
in the cloak with our lightsabers. Awesome. Totally missed this hallway too. The light, go, jumping to uh, light speed, hyperspeed. This was so worth the walk that we made to get over here. This was awesome. In our excitement to get upstairs, we missed some of these clones downstairs on the opposite side of the door, but this is the end of the Obi-Wan experience. Look, we got Yoda up on top, killing a clone trooper, taking him out. Nice. All here in the Movie Star Center. Fascinating, awesome of Movie Plus, Movie Star Plus, Disney Plus here in Europe for putting that together. That was absolutely incredible. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Born and raised in Barcelona and ready to show you the Park Well. Uh, the Park Well is this public park where we have the architecture of Antoni Gaudí. Gaudí is the architect of Sagrada Familia. Oh, good breeze. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and then Gaudi, uh, well, you will see, you will know him very well after this tour uh, today. First of all, we will start with this project that was meant to be small town uh, for people of Barcelona. And it was sponsored by a family well. Uh, the family well, they were the main businessman of Barcelona, like our Rockefeller. They had so much money, so they purchased a hill with which they started to urbanize the place. And then they commissioned Gaudí uh, in 1901 to make the, the urbanization, okay? Let's see in this map. So, um, I have to tell you that the place is very small. <laughs> well small the construction is small um, they had only time to make three houses it was meant to be a town for 55 and they only made three okay so what happened well people in general they didn't like it <laughs> okay today you will like it because today we understand the architecture of Gaudí today we understand about many things but back at that time, 100 years ago, people, they were much more conservative. Today we are open-minded and we, we understand. And then, uh, Guel and Gaudí, they were men ahead of uh, their time. And then they made this kind of architecture that we call modern style, that is inspired upon the nature. Uh? And then they came to the hill, and then what they did is to, just to use the rocks that they found, just to make the construction. So you will see statues, you will see pillars, you will see balconies, uh, flower pots, uh, canals, all made with uh, stones that they found in the same place, okay? The other point is that they saved water. Uh, they took the rainwater to irrigate the place and to plant the trees, the bushes, the flowers, all of that, okay? Um, they started to construct and then they wa there was a model house that was this one, this rose one. And then they were showing it to the families. The families, they said, I don't like it. I don't like the style. I don't like that we don't have any transportation from Barcelona, because this was not Barcelona uh, in 1901. This was outside Barcelona. And they said, no train, no bus, no nothing. Okay, so it's too far. And then they said, okay, I don't like it. Sorry, uh, there was another project similar to this one in another part of Barcelona. And in the other project, they offered train up to the hill and the families, they decided to go to the other, okay? Then the model house that they were showing to the families became Gaudi's home. Huh? So it's the place where he lived. This architect, this famous architect, he lived in the Parkwell. Hmm? The other two houses, well, this is the only one they sold, the only one. The family that we have inside there is still the same one. So the grandchildren of the main or the only client, okay? And then they are still living in the place. They didn't sell the place, so they're still living. And this one was Wells' home, huh? so the sponsor's home. He lived there, well, he went there for the weekends, okay? And when he sold the park, he sold it to the city council, everything. 
with his own house, Mr. Well, I mean, okay? And then the house, this one, was turned into a public school. We have yes. children there. It's an elementary school, even today, okay? So we have three houses. Model house, that became Gaudi's house. Uh, the house of the lawyer of Mr. Well, that was the only client, okay? And Mr. Well's home, that is today a school. And we have two more, tiny, very tiny, that are for the doorman of the park. And they are made by Gaudi, they are super original, you will see. And they are on the main entrance. This is not the main entrance. Huh? The, the other that we will see later is the main entrance. And I think it's everything, but now huh, we will explore, and I will explain to you also another place that I like so much. That is the square, huh? and I will tell you why I like it. Hmm? It's just engineering and things of architecture. Very easy to understand, you will see. But I like it. I like it so much. Gaudi was a revolutionary huh? in architecture. And you've seen the parrots, huh? the green parrots, green parrots. Don't worry, they don't eat human meat. Hmm? Okay. Uh, they are surrounding us now. Uh, like in the movie of the birds of TikTok. Huh? Uh, well, these, these green parrots actually, or these green parrots, uh, they were originally from South America. And they came uh, uh, just as a pet in the city. Uh, there were some families, they didn't like them. <laughs> they released them and they became local huh? eventually. So there they are. Huh? So next thing in the parks of Barcelona, specifically in this park, the park well, huh? okay, where they have human meat. Yeah? <laughs> okay, let's go. These balls that you see on the ground are the balls of a rosary. So when the park is viewed from above, the balls form into a necklace, making a rosary. And then this is. The model house at Parkwell that became the architect Gaudi's house. How about this view, guys? My goodness. This is the courtyard here at Parkwell. Try to go slow. Do my best here, going in a circle. As you can see, massive. Over there would be the Mediterranean Sea, that beautiful view. square because it never became a town right and then uh, it's a square right let's say it's a square okay and then in the square uh, we have sand instead of concrete why sand the sand what it does is to absorb the rainwater uh, so if it was a sponge huh? and then what we have down here was meant to be the marketplace you will see later place with columns down here, it was meant to be, yes, the place for the market, for the stands, all of that. And the columns, they have pipes inside. And then this pipe, what they do is to collect the rainwater from the square, filter right, with the sand, and then driving the water to a water tank in the minus two. Huh? So it's a square, it's a market with columns and pipes, and it's a water tank. And then in the same water tank, they had all the water they needed to irrigate the park. Okay, so it's a great idea. Uh, it's engineering, it's uh, very original, uh, very smart uh, in general. The other thing is the bench. The bench is just made with broken tiles, broken ceramics, recycled from other buildings that were demolished previously. So they went to a demolition, they were collecting the tiles classifying them into colors and shapes, coming in the new place, in the park, and sticking the tiles on the bench. Okay. At the same time, it's a serpent, you see, the Gaudi, the architect, he said that it's the way to see the face of the person that is talking to you. And it's a social bench, yeah? it's not straight, so you, you talk, not to the air, you just talk to the person, okay? So they sit in groups, the people, and they see each other. Mm -hmm. uh, just the view, the view is fantastic. So take a picture, enjoy. 
Uh, try the bench because the bench is ergonomic. It's adapting to your body as well. We just studied. it. Gaudi made raster models with it and then with the shapes, then studied the shape of the human body. And then when you sit down, it's good. Huh? Maybe you can fry an egg on it, but you can, <laughs> huh? try it. Huh? Uh, I'm gonna wait a little bit yeah, for you. There's the beautiful view from the square. These columns are all underneath the square that we just were. So this is what's holding up the square. It's absolutely gorgeous. Hard to believe all this was built okay, when it guys. was built and it's preserved so well. I tell you, this was the marketplace, huh? the marketplace. Amazing, it's like a temple, huh? like a Greek temple, Egyptian temple probably. Gaudi took the inspiration from travel guides that he saw on libraries, he saw pictures of adventurers uh, of early 1900s. And then he saw the pictures and then he started to uh, sketch the shapes on his notebooks, uh, these Egyptian temples, these Greek temples. And then he tried to mix the nature, the rocks that he found with this kind of Greek architecture, Egyptian architecture, just to turn the place into a market. Huh? It never became a market <laughs> again, huh? but uh, you will see on the ceiling the tiles again, with these shapes so beautifully made, and also some hooks, you know, the hooks on the ceiling to hang the chandeliers when it was necessary uh, to, to put. Uh, it's, it's sad that it never became a market, but sometimes we use it for public performances of musicians or just theater, things like that, something improvised, okay? Um, the shape you see, the big one, is a sun. One sun for one season. There are four seasons, so there will be four suns. This one is summertime, okay? Uh, you will guess with the color, and you will guess also with the position of the shape. I mean, there are two that are together. They are the softest seasons. So fall and spring, they are together. And then on one extreme, there is summer. This is summer side, so this one. And then just on the other extreme, there is the winter time. Okay, let's see them. And the lines, they were falling down because of the humidity of the same system. Okay, all the water passing and leaking, and that's why it was just falling down. It's Salamander Fountain. Down here, so you venture further and further down. Awesome picture spot, Instagram spot for sure. So they said that with these houses down here, they believe that uh, the architect was inspired by seeing an opera of Hansel and Gretel and tried to recreate or emulate the gingerbread houses from the story. We're out in front of Sagrada Familia, the chapel built by Gaudi, the same architect that built Parkwell, and Gaudi is actually buried here. Project by a religious foundation, remember? Then since 1882, so 140 years making this place, Gaudi became one of the architects, the most important architect. And then he designed the whole building before dying. Because he knew that he was going to die without ending. Then he was teaching his apprentices for the future. And then the others, like a chain, they continued for him. Huh? The shapes you will see, the concept itself as a church is by Gaudi. He made plaster models, sketches, calculations, explanations, all of that is inherited by the apprentices that are still making the church. It is supposed to be finished in the year 2028 probably. Yeah. So far we have two sites. We have this site that is from 1920s, 1930s. It represents the nativity, so birth of Jesus. That's why it's a place with shade. 
because this is the place that overlooks sunrise. Sunrise, birth of the day, birth of Jesus. Okay? So it means that the opposite side right now has the sun with the sunset, last moments of the day, last moments of Jesus. It's on the opposite. So is this facing east? This is facing almost east. Huh? And this one behind me. Yes? You see that the building is cut off? Okay? So there, uh, there will be, facing this apartment building, there will be four more towers representing the resurrection of Jesus. And it's more or less facing the south. So noon. Okay? Noon because it's the main entrance. It will be the main entrance, the other. So we have no main, no main entrance right now. We have only this one and the other that are the sides. Okay, the main entrance will be there. The back of Sagrada Familia, representing the death of Jesus on the cross, okay. end of Jesus' life. This was completed in the 1980s, whereas the other side was yeah, done in the close, 20s. Uh... It's huge. This is the view from the Museum of National Art of Catalonia. You see the whole of Barcelona. We are eating at the Marina Bay restaurant tonight, right here on the harbor. Sitting outside. All right, so first course tonight is just a simple garden salad. And of course, we had some bread, bread is gone, and water again to drink. All right, entree is here. Got some beans and some Catalonia sausage. Looks very, very good, salad was good. My leftover salad there. About to dig in, and that'll do it for our second day in Barcelona. About to head in, pack up for the night, get ready for the morning, because we hit the road. Tomorrow's video is probably gonna be quite a bit shorter, um, just because we're gonna be on a bus for a majority of the day, going to France. So um, we are gonna stop about lunchtime or so um, in a city in Southern France called Carcassonne, which is a uh, Middle Ages city. So we'll see what it's like. I'll show you guys that figure I won't show y'all too much of the bus ride because, well, it's just that. It's a bus ride. But thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed Barcelona. Thanks for keeping up with me. We'll catch you on the flip side. What's your why?